Well, th those are two very different questions as a consumer and as a composer. I mean, I can speak as a composer, and I think I probably should speak as a composer. Um, and boy, I mean, w in my lifetime so far, um, we have seen a, a real sea change in the way technology has, we're using technology uh, to disseminate art. Um, and for those who are interested, I, I did write an uh, op-ed article in the, uh, the Opinionator section of the New York Times a couple years ago called The Reconstruction of Rome, which addressed my first visit as a fellow to the American Academy in Rome in 1978 and then my subsequent uh, return as a, um, uh, a resident in 2011. And I talked about the difference in the worlds between that gap. And it's rather remarkable, and, and I did address a lot of the things that, that, you know, sort of you're talking about in terms of the progression of, from LP to vinyl to, uh, the LP vinyl to, to CD to, to obviously fully digital. Um, I, I think that the profound quality of, of what this has done to us as, as listeners is that, you know, there, there has been a, a huge shift in the way we actually process information and in and the way ideation um, is uh, is is manifest in both the way we think and the way we actually create um, I've seen it I see it in my students I mean I'm one of the last generation the last generation of composers um, who write by hand and many of my uh, colleagues um, have gone and uh, over to working uh, specifically solely with computer, but there are still some holdouts. I simply, although I'm great with word processors, I, I simply cannot fathom um, the idea of writing music without having a pencil in my hand. And that's just the way I am, and I just have to accept that. But, but really, uh, for everyone else, and certainly for all my students, uh, it's it's a different world. And the way uh, the the way that music is is now thought of in chunks, and the way we can just grab huge chunks of digital sound and and manipulate them, um, was something that was only dreamed of in the music concrete era and of the 1960s, where people were you know taking these sounds and trying to um, analogly put them into into uh, pieces. And and now it's just so so incredibly easy to do. So um, that's really changed the way people create music, and it's the way it changed the way people hear music. As a result, uh, uh, the Bruckner Symphony is something which seems like a dinosaur. It's very hard for people to really concentrate over that period of time, over a, a forty-minute span. It's just really hard to get people to sit and listen to sound and audio for that long. I mean, we're so used to things being broken down into these bite-sized bite-sized mini bits that it's very very hard so as a result you know we're there's this there's this whole different way of of approaching it and and it's it's really strange because uh, we as composers uh, certainly I grew up um, with the notion that one of the things that separated uh, uh, composers was the ability to really create something over long term and really make it sustain. And, you know, I find now that that somehow that in and of itself is not something that people are really paying attention to. So it's an interesting problem. Um, and I think this is pretty profound. And, and I, I also don't think, by the way, that, that what's happened in the last 10, 20 years um, is permanent. I think it's also going to be evolving. I think people are going to start to to want and yearn after long again long statements, um, but we're seeing we're seeing clearly a, a very a very huge shift. So getting back to the LP CD question, um, you know, for for me that's a that's a consumer question. It's it's more of a of a question of you know well I have a large LP collection. What do I do with it? Which is, is a big problem because um, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> And I have, you know, CDs, and what do I do with those? When, how do you actually store this music? How are we going to actually keep my music? I've got all these performances. What, what medium do I put them on that's actually going to last? I mean, seriously, that's a big problem. I, I talked to um, uh, my my friend, uh, the film director Joel Cohen. We were talking about, you know, the fact that that you can't 
there's, there's really no way that you can actually securely know that, that your product is going to stay there forever. Um, because whatever you have, however you put it on, is, is going to become obsolete. And then how do, you, how do you know that you can actually, that people are going to know it, be able to access it in 100 years? It's, it's a bit, bit, of a, bit of a complicated problem. And certainly with written music going out, um, you know, people aren't looking at scores that much anymore. They're just simply, you know, accessing sound files. Um, and publishing industry is, it's, you know, it's all sort of online. So there's a whole, whole real, whole huge question about that. But that's, again, from the standpoint of the com composer, I think, more than the consumer.